welcome to a, another tutorial. Um, today, Wednesday, we're going to do a shorter tutorial, I'm hoping, um, on how to color rocks. Um, the last couple of tutorials that I have filmed have been a lot longer than anticipated, so I'm hoping this one stays a little shorter than those. Um, when I'm filming this, it is Friday and payday, and those are just rough days for me. <laughs> My husband always works on payday and I've got three little boys and I've got to pay the bills and make the shopping list and then my kids, the one who's in afternoon kindergarten goes to school early and they all come home early and I've only got an hour or so that I've got to get all my shopping done before they come home and then oh my goodness and then they're not on their schedule because their school got out early and if you have autistic or ADHD kids or they just, they like their schedules and when it gets off, when it's not the same, it's they're just whiny and it's just hard. And so I'm at the end of my day, they are in bed and I'm just trying to collect myself. So I don't know, like life is life and it's not always peaches and cream and some days are hard and that is just real life. And that's what I am doing today, real life. But um, now they're in bed and I get to relax a little bit before my husband comes home and we're going to color some rocks. So the book that I chose to work in tonight is um, Sigur Ok Sogner and it is a Swedish book by um, Emily Oberg oh, and unfortunately this book is out of print. and. I should have found a different book to work in, but this um, technique of coloring rocks, you can apply to any rocks, any stone, in any coloring book that you have. So let's, um, let's go to the book page we're going to work in. If you have this book, it's a beautiful book, I wish she would reprint it. This is the book we're going to work in, do these stones for the sword and the stone, and I've done a few already and then we're just going to do the rest. Um, before we get started on our um, coloring though, I wanted to show you some rocks because they're coming in all varieties. So I pulled these just out of my um, garden, in my flower garden in the front. I have a little fountain that has um, just like river rocks in it and so I pulled those and um, we're going to see that they come in so many different colors and they're not all one color. So I'm going to zoom in and we're going to take a look and uh, then we're going to get to coloring. Okay so here are our rocks. We've got a fairly dark one. But as you can see, it's got other colors, like there's some lighter browns in there and some grays, maybe even a little yellow in those spots. So it's fairly rough, it has a lot of texture to it. And then we have this one that's almost pinkish, purplish, it's got sparkly bits in it. Um, grays, pinks. Beautiful. Also very rough texture. It's got bumps. Okay, and then we have this one that's more yellow and lighter browns. Some white speckles. It's a little bit smoother but also has bumps, ridges. Okay, let's see, this one is kind of a brown with some red in it, some gray, some yellow. This one is smoother to the touch. It's gray and then it has lighter gray and white. Turn it over and it's got a little more texture, some darker spots. 
And then this one, we have very contrast in colors. So we've got the dark and gray and brown, but then on this side, it's very light colored. And so rocks, they're not all one color. They've got texture, they've got bumps. So we, that's how, what we want to kind of portray in our coloring with some different colors and some texture. All right, so as you can see, we've portrayed that in our coloring. So we've got shadows, but we also have different colors. We have yellow and brown and gray and light spots and dark spots. And we've portrayed that texture by not filling in all the tooth of the paper. So I've still got some white speckly bits coming through the color. If that makes sense. So that's what, we, that's what we're gonna do today. So I've pulled our colors and because they're rocks and because of all those colors I just showed you, you can use whatever colors you want. If you want red rocks, pink rocks, whatever. But today we're gonna do um, this brownish, grayish, yellowish rocks. So my first color is black, then espresso, light umber, yellow ochre, and sand. And these are the Prismacolor Premiers. They are my preferred pencil, but we're gonna have to do some tutorials with the polychromos and other ones that I have too. But for right now, we're sticking with the Prismacolor. So, um, usually, I usually start with the lightest color and then put a base, but this time, I'm gonna start with black. I know, right, black. Okay, so let's do this rock right here, this big one, and I'm gonna put a light layer of black. Now I'm doing circular motions, fairly large circular motions, and I'm not trying to fill in all of the paper. Let's see if I can zoom that in anymore. Let's try that. Okay. Um, so as you can see, I'm not filling in, I'm I'm not carrying too much. I'm doing circular motions and just putting that a base color of that black down. But it doesn't look like black because I'm going so light, it looks like a gray. Light pressure, but don't be afraid to be messy. The light pressure is more important than anything else. Okay, so it looks like a nice light scribble. Okay, then we're gonna go with the espresso and I'm gonna put it where the shadows go. Okay. This time I'm gonna make my circles a little tighter. Light pressure again. I'm still not worried about filling in every tiny space. Going over it a few times just to get darkness. Let's go up where this leaf is. Okay. 
So light pressure. If you want any place darker, just go over it again. Okay, then let's go in with our light umber. And that, we're gonna go right over the top of the espresso and then a little further out. And again, just circles. Letting that tooth of the paper show through. Okay, let's go put it just above this. I think we're gonna make this moss. Not tonight though. Let's kind of put it on the side there. Okay. Looking good. So much of the time we want a sharp point on our pencil and with these rocks, because we're not trying to fill in the tooth of the paper, it's almost better if your pencil is a little bit dull. So that's kind of nice for a change. Okay, so now we're gonna go in with the yellow ochre and I'm not gonna put it in the deepest shadows. I'm just gonna kind of start out here just add a little yellow where we want it or where you want it where do you want bits of yellow put some in there uh, let's put a little over here some over here circular motions a little more of a dull pencil all right then we're gonna go in with our sand and go in those lighter areas, give it a little bit of a highlight. This pencil I am pressing a little bit more, but again, I don't wanna blend out everything. So maybe a little more softly, more broad. And then here we'll push press a little more just to give that a highlighted look. Now you are really zoomed in right now. You're even further zoomed in than what I see when I'm looking at the paper. So let's zoom out a little bit so you can see what it looks like um, when you just look at the paper. Okay, here we are zoomed out a little bit more. And I really am liking it. I have a bit of a harsh line right here, which is fine on a rock. But let's see if I can just add a little color. This is that light umber. And just kind of take away maybe a little bit of that. Okay. 
So you go ahead and look at your rock and decide if there's any place you want to add more yellow, more shadow, anything else that you personally want. Remember, our rocks are all different. I couldn't go out there and in that <clears throat> in my garden and find two rocks that are the same. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit more shadow. So I'm gonna go back to that black and I'm gonna put a little more shadow. Shadow in it. Still not pressing hard. and still doing those circular motions. Just add a little bit of more shadow behind this rock, behind this front rock. Okay. All right, then let's just do one more rock. Okay, so let's take that black and lightly and in circular motions, add the black. To our rock. Okay, this rock has a lot going on in front of it, and so I think we're going to make it a little bit darker. So let's go in with our espresso. Okay, so we've pretty much covered that rock with the espresso now. Okay, then let's go in with the light umber and add it. We'll get it pretty good in here. I think I'm gonna stay away from that bottom with this and put it more here and light touch maybe over there at the top there all right light touch on that then let's go in with our yellow ochre and let's I'm gonna add it a little bit over here bit up here. I am pressing a little bit this time but still going in circular motions. Move over here. So I've left this yellow more at the top edge here. I don't think we're going to need the sand this time, but let's go back in with our espresso along this bottom edge. Okay. 
Then let's take our black along there as well. Lightly, circular motion. And then let's go in with our light umber and just kind of feather that black out a little bit. Kind of blending it out but without filling in the tooth of the paper. And what I mean by filling in the tooth of the paper is that I'm still seeing white specks through all the color I'm putting down. Okay, so there's that rock, that stone. He's a bit darker because he's there in the middle and got a lot going on in front of him. I like it. I like that not all my rocks look the same. Like I said, if I went out there, I wouldn't be able to find two rocks that look the same. So for this third rock, you would just do the same thing. Just fill that block in lightly, circular motions. Okay, so there's the black. Then let's go to the espresso. Get behind this vine. Maybe some down here. Just light circular motions. Working on the edge of the paper this time, so kind of keep going off. Okay, then let's go to the light umber. Go over that espresso that you put down and out a little further. This rock's out in front. Maybe he's lighter colored than the rest of them. He's a little lighter. Maybe he has more yellow. Maybe he has more gray. Those are decisions you get to make. Okay. Let's get our yellow ochre. And let's put him in here. doing bigger circles with him, filling over everything this time. Okay, and then our sand. I'm going to go right on this top edge. And a little bit of that brightness. Yeah. Edge there.
Okay. Take our black and let's just go right down the side of that line. are fun because you don't have to be as perfect. Be a little more artistic about it. Be a little more free. Put your colors wherever. Scribble. Kids aren't afraid when they color. My kid, man, he can grab four crowns at a time. And he just colors away. He doesn't care. And his work is beautiful. So don't care so much. Relax, enjoy the process. Color some rocks. Zoomed out there so we can see our finished rocks. And um, yeah, enjoy some coloring. Relax, de-stress from whatever you've had to do today. And enjoy just some you time. Just some relaxation and some coloring. and. Don't worry too much about it. Just scribble some color on those rocks. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and uh, have a nice day, and I will see you next time. Bye.